everybody. I'm Kim Barnes. And I'm Mike Barnes. We're with Barnes Team Media. And we are so glad to be part of this 24-hour global summit. I don't know who's been staying up this whole time, but it's a lot to learn, isn't it? I don't know who had the morning hours. I mean, like overnight morning hours. I'm sorry. So many, but so many amazing speakers and trainers and all kinds of information from all sorts of industries to really be able to learn a lot of new things. We are excited to be with you today, and we're going to talk about communicating with confidence when you're doing it virtually. And isn't that the world that we are living in now? Sort of like it or not, right? Having to live in this new virtual world. Pretty crazy. How virtual is it? I'm sharing our, <laughs> uh, our feed right now onto my webpage, on my uh, Facebook page. It's just the way things are these days. You know, 20 years ago, the, the, really the only thing, the only way to communicate back then was in person or on the phone. Yeah. And that really was about the only way to communicate. Ancient days for our kids, right? <laughs> That's right. They can't even appreciate that. Many of you may not even remember those what? days either. You didn't have an iPhone? How did you survive? What's a landline? <laughs> but, but one of the things that we have seen is that even in the last few years, people have started embracing the idea of video. Yes. A little bit more, a little bit. a little bit more, but there's still a lot of people that this is a really uncomfortable world to be in. Yeah, I think the, the, the biggest thing is it's been very slow, slowly but surely. A few phones got some cameras on them, and then social media started coming around with Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and a little bit more and a little bit more, and then iPhones. Now everyone has an iPhone or an Android and a little bit more and a little bit more, but now you, you have to. Everyone that you know is mm -hmm. basically quarantined into their house. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone working from home. Almost everyone, if they have a face-to-face a -face meeting with someone, mm -hmm. it has to be through video, mm -hmm. through some type of uh, virtual communication. When you're forced into something, it, it kind of makes you well, sink or swim. And hopefully everyone is swimming right now because it's not that tough. And you know, we're a little bit biased because <laughs> we've both been in, in TV for 30 years. When we went to school, we both went to school at the University of Texas. When we went to school, we knew what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to be on TV for our jobs. Mm -hmm. We knew we wanted to be as news reporters or sports reporters, news, sports. And so we knew, okay, being on camera like this is exactly what we wanted to do. That's going to be our job. We knew we have to do it every day if we're going to be good at our job and get paid. And so we knew that that was part of our job description, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that most of you or all of you didn't think about, oh, I should be a car dealer or I should be in sales or I should be a lawyer or I should be in real estate or fill in the blank of any kind of uh, occupation out there. And I'm pretty sure you didn't pick that job because you thought, Ooh, perfect. I'll get to be on camera and do videos all the time. Yeah. No, no that's not yeah. the way it went. And as the world has changed just in general, and we're moving into a more video oriented world now, of course, with us working from home and staying at home, it is a necessity. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you know the things that you can do to try to make that as comfortable for you as possible, as well as as comfortable and effective for the people who are you're communicating with, whether you're doing a presentation, whether you're in sales and doing a sales presentation through the computer now, or teaching or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, if you're a CEO, having to really, you know, engage and really communicate with your employees, you want to make sure that you're doing it in the most effective way possible when you are forced to be on camera. So, you know, if you're one of those that is, we're having to sort of drag kicking and screaming into this new world, know that. Well, first of all, know right, you're not alone. Right. You're not alone for sure. And know that it's no wonder that it feels a little bit weird because it is strange to just be having a conversation with the camera just to be real. It is a little bit different, but, but we've, we've worked with and trained so many different people over the last year or so who they get into it and they're like, I don't, I don't like this. Ooh, I don't like the way I look. Ooh, I, it's just so weird talking to a camera or talking to a computer. I just don't like this. It's okay. First of all, to feel that way. So many people feel that way, but I'm telling you right now, it's just mind over matter. I love to tell people the camera does not bite. <laughs> it does not bite. And this coming from me, now, this may surprise you. I am a shy introvert. Yes. She knows yes. this. I am a shy introvert. And I knew going into become, trying to be a sportscaster that I had to get over that. I had to look at that lens and I had to picture the fact that there was a, a person behind it, whether it was a friend, a relative, a sports fan, whatever it is, there's a 
something back there. Let me, uh, there, there it is. I see them. And then talk to them like that. Talk to that lens just like it's a person. If I can do it, I know that you can do it because we've talked to so many men, women, old, young, it doesn't matter. And so many of them say the exact same thing. I know a lot of you are going through that right now because you have to in this virtual meeting world. But if I can do it, I know you can too. We're going to help you now over the next few minutes, get things ready. Well, and I think so much of it is how can you be confident when you're doing something that you've never done before or you've never had to embrace in the same way? And so I think that part of that is just thinking about the things that you can know so that that can build your confidence. And we want to help build your confidence so that you can feel comfortable and confident moving forward when you go do these virtual meetings. And some of it is just really being just being conscious of the fact and owning the fact that you know your stuff. Yeah. So you know the things that you want to share, you know it better than the other people you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And so when you can feel really grounded in the fact that I have something to share and I know it, and that's what I'm going to share, they don't know what you're planning to say. So if you say it a little differently, they don't know. Yeah. But just really feeling feeling confident in what you know and being able to figure out how do I translate that especially if you're a speaker or somebody who's used to you know, having the audience around you and you really draw that energy from them and you can see their expressions, you can see if they look bored or happy <laughs> or interested or yawning or whatever it is, you can draw your energy from that and kind of help, that just help, helps guide your conversation, yeah. just guide your presentation. So you just have to sort of take what you know to be true mm -hmm. when you're having these, vir these in-person conversations mm -hmm. And how do you connect with people? And how do I, you know, how do I get their attention? And how do I present to them? And now do it the same way. Right. Do a little pivot. Right. Sound. I mean, sounds simple. Sounds, sounds simple. <laughs> but 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 for me, and I'll go back to. I know it surprised you that I'm I'm so shy and such an introvert. But for me, even to this day, I don't exactly like to stand up or or, or be anywhere, or even go on camera and say, "Hey, I'm Mike Barnes. I'm from Austin, Texas." Anything like that. It's just it's just not comfortable for me. But if you ask me to talk about something that I know a lot about, whether it's communication or especially with sports, being a sportscaster for 30 <laughs> he years. He could go on all day. I could go on, in fact, sit <laughs> or back days. Around, sit back, who's after us on the uh, schedule? Because I can take up all their time too. No, I do that because it's not like I think I'm the smartest person in the world knowing about sports, but I know a lot about it. So I can go on and on and on about whether it's, for us being a sportscaster in Austin, talking about the Longhorns or the Cowboys or the, the old Oilers or the Rockets or the Spurs or the Rangers or the Astros. I could go on and on and on talking about these things because I know that I know, chances are I know more than the person watching. and They're interested in what I have to say. It'd be like if a history expert or a government expert or an economics expert was on and I'm listening to them, you probably know more than me. So I'm like, wow, really? I, I want to hear what else you have to say. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm not going to be judging you. And I think so many pe mm -hmm. people, again, think they're going to be judged like, oh, my gosh, what if I say the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. What if I mess up on a word? What if I have a hair out of place? <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Again, just be confident in what you know. And especially if you're so if think about it in, in, in your world, are you a sales trainer? Are you an expert in customer service? Mm -hmm in showing up well, what is it that you are an expert in and know that you're going to have something to share and something to, to give to that conversation. And, and even if it's a virtual meeting where you're on with your coworkers, you know, if you've been working on a project and you've been doing the research for it, you know that research yeah. and that's what you're sharing. Yeah, I may be going out of order in, in what we're gonna say, but I, I, I compare it to jumping off the diving board. When I was a little kid, I was scared to death of, of a diving board. <laughs> And then as soon as I did it, I realized this is great. I love it. It's not going to hurt me. Okay, now going off a high dive is a little bit different, but just going off a normal diving board. Okay, try that. And then once you do it, it's like, oh, this is fun. This is easy. Again, it's not going to bite. Well, this is even easier because you don't have to worry about a belly flop when you're going off you know, lo looking at the well, camera I don't know. lens. You could, you could probably have no, a no, no, as, long, as long as as long as it's not a viral as long as video. No one back gonna... there making us go viral behind that's us. That's right. No, you're gonna you're gonna be fine. And, and that's what all it takes is that once you start doing it, and again, have the confidence because of what you're talking about that you're gonna do okay. Mm -hmm. It makes things so much easier, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you that once you start, you it's not that you won't be able to stop. It's that it's easier to keep on going mm -hmm. because, again, you'll have all this confidence. And certainly as you're learning and improving, when you are able to get feedback and training and things like that to be able to just continue to get better and better and better mm -hmm. with each and every video or virtual meeting you either are part of or maybe are leading, it'll just 
it'll you'll be able to get that feedback so that you know, oh, here are the things that I need to maybe improve on the next time, yeah. and I'll just keep getting better and better every time. Yeah, and that's one of the things we're going to help you with over the next 20 minutes or so is the fact that the, Kim likes to talk about how, you know, a lot of people start off down here, and then maybe they'll get up here, and maybe when they get really, really good, they'll be up here. Well, you chances are you don't want to start right here when you do your first video. If you're a Okay, right in here, that's all right. You don't have to be perfect. Right. But if you're up here and you're 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 gonna be okay, you're not gonna embarrass yourself. And by embarrass yourself, I'm not talking about what you're saying because again, you're the expert. Mm -hmm. Trust in that. But embarrass yourself in other ways, mainly by equipment or mainly by the way the shot looks or, mm -hmm. or what you're doing. It's like, okay, if I'm, I'm going to lay back and <laughs> just talk to you like that, it's a little bit different. You know, th there are ways that you can embarrass yourself on camera, but without what you say. But we can give you some, some tips and tricks right now mm -hmm. about how to avoid that. And then you're going to start right there and right. only get better. Right avoid the, the the proverbial basement, let's start on the first floor and get to the penthouse. Well, and for somebody, if, if any of you are perfectionists, I know for somebody like me, that is a, a she's challenge. A, she's a perfectionist. Yes, that is a challenge. And because of that, sometimes I'm very hesitant to try something new if I don't feel like I have a, a, you know, a handle on it. So hopefully by the end of this time, you will definitely feel like, oh, okay, I think I can do this and I can only con continue to get better from there. Yeah. And I think so much of, you know, also besides knowing your stuff, if you will, and, and feeling confident in it is just, you know, really at the end of the day, you still need to be true to who you are mm -hmm. and be yourself. It's much easier that way. I, I know you think, okay, well, Mike, you're really shy and now you're really outgoing on camera. Well, I'm, I'm kind of outgoing when I'm with friends and, and loved ones. And talking about sports. And talking, about, <laughs> talking about sports. So you want to be comfortable. When you're super comfortable and being yourself, how are you? Now, so we're not trying to say if, if you're a, a, a incredibly shy, timid person, and there's nothing wrong with that, trust me. <laughs> if, you're, if you're an incredibly shy, timid person, you don't like to really yell or scream. You kind of like to be quiet. Okay, you may have to raise it just a little bit, but we're not saying you need to go from really demure to, hey, everybody, <laughs> welcome to the show. Just be yourself because once you're yourself, the biggest thing is it's not how you feel. It's the mm -hmm. people who are watching you because they're going to see it in your eyes that you're being true to yourself. They're going to see the passion that you have for whatever you're talking about. And that's how you're going to connect through the world of video. Absolutely. And also, I think a lot of it too is knowing the things that you can control because again, you know your stuff, so mm -hmm. you, you know what you're going to talk about, but it's also the, the things that you can control to make sure you're going to look good and sound good. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen any of the virtual, the viral, viral videos, videos that have been going around with the, you know, these, I, I'm calling them sort of Zoom bloopers or, <laughs> or the virtual meeting bloopers that we're seeing, you know, kind of like when you have TV shows and things uh -huh. like that, but you know, if you probably pop up on a TV show for probably fall of 21. Sure. Absolutely. You know, if you've seen the, there's, there was one, you know, there's been one where, you know, somebody's husband walked behind her in a virtual meeting and he's in his underwear and, you know, there's been some other ones. And I actually had a friend just this week who told me that her husband has actually been working from home for quite a bit for, you know, years. And so she's used to him being on meetings and things like that, but they've always just used their audio uh, yeah. controls. They've never used the camera because they didn't have to. And so she walked up behind him last week and said, Hey honey. And I grabbed his shoulders and gave him a kiss on the head. And he just kindly <laughs> said, um, we're on, our cameras on. And so it was a little bit embarrassing. And so she just said, Oops. Okay. So granted in this world of, people working from home and people's kids are at home because schools are out. So, you know, there's a lot going on in people's homes now, which are now they're where they're having to work from home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know that it's going to be possible that, you know, you might hear our dog bark or you might hear, you know, in some other situations, you, you know, have a toddler walking in, a, not in our house, but in, you know, in, in other videos that we've seen in the past of, you know, a, a kid walks in the room. So, you know, yes, there's a little bit of grace for that, but we also want to make sure that you know some of the things so that you don't go viral when you don't really mean to. <laughs> well, you know? I, I, yeah. I compare it again to you're going to have a little bit of anxiety because you're on, on screen. You're not TV, but it's similar to it, especially on a live Facebook. It's like, okay, if I mess up, I can't do <laughs> take two. So your anxiety is up to here. Well, let's lower it a little bit because if you know the microphone is working, you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. You know you're wearing a shirt or a color or, or a dress or whatever, that's going to look okay. Lower it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, let's see, there's no people running it around in the background. There's nobody in their underwear. Or anything. <laughs> okay. right. Lower it a little bit more. Right. You know, you've got light coming in through the windows or on the lights. Lower it a little bit more. All that anxiety, bring it down to where all you have to worry about is you and what you know. And you know everything because, again, you're the expert. Chances are, 
if you're if you're talking on any type of Zoom video or mm-hmm. webinar, Facebook Live, you're probably the expert. So, you know, if, if all the anxiety is about that, huh, this, this is a breeze. <laughs> Again, go back to, to me doing sports. Okay, I, chances are I know it. So let, let's talk. Right. We can talk, right. talk right. forever. And it's the same thing with you to where you're the expert. So bring all that outside anxiety down to where all you have to worry about is yourself. And that's the easy part because you know everything, so stay confident. And it also helps when you sort of know your technology as far as the kind of meeting platforms you're using or the webinar platforms you're using. And what I mean by that is one of the things that will also bring your anxiety down, I think, too, is knowing how to mute yourself. So when you're on a virtual meeting, make sure you know where is that button so that I can mute mute myself. And, you know, often you may want to keep yourself muted almost all the time, Mm -hmm. except when you're, you know, of course, when you're wanting to talk. So know where that button is. Be very familiar with that one. And also knowing where the the button is to stop your camera so that you can stop the video momentarily so that if you are, you know, if you do have, you see your husband coming or, (laughs) or, you know, just if, you know, if you're in the middle of lunch or something like that, you know, you probably don't want to eat, you know, during the virtual meeting and And, and, chew gum or things like that. If anybody's watching, if you don't know Zoom, don't know about the the platforms like that, when she says button, it's just a little something that you're going to click with your mouse on the screen both mm-hmm. for the mute and for turning off the camera. And that doesn't mean you're going to go, oh, shoot, where do I hit turn off mm, my, right. my camera here? No, it just turns off the, the video part so that it puts up a picture or a black mm-hmm. screen or something mm-hmm. like that. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about it. it, 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 it it's not, again, when you hear, I hear button, I'm like, okay, where, where's this button? <laughs> that's I right. It's just hit? a little thing you tap. Yeah, just a little, little something you tap on the screen. And that's that's just part of sort of the etiquette of Zoom too, or any virtual meeting, so that you can just remember that when your camera is on, that they can see you. So you want to be careful, you know, if you're, you know, moving around or you know, doing a bunch <laughs> of stuff and, and you're know, looking for things or let me redecorate, let me fluff the flowers. You know, if you're doing all of those things, you just need to remember that if your camera is on, they see you. And even though you might be a, what, just a tiny little box in a, you know, in a big, a big but virtual meeting, they can still, they can go still viral. see you. <laughs> You can be in a tiny box and still go viral. That's right. So make sure you know how to turn that camera off and just be thinking of the, 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 the way you're coming across, if you will. You know, I like, you like to tell this, you know, kind of give the example of that, you know, you wouldn't show up in your bathing suit. Yeah. (laughs) Let's say you're going to go to a presentation or a board meeting. Are you going to show up with a lounge chair in your bathing suit and with little kids by your side? Chances are the answer is no. So when you're at home, if you're in your study, like we're in a study right now, if you're in your study, are you going to show up in a lounge chair to where you're laying back like this? <laughs> okay, I'm ready for this meeting. Are you going to do that? Are you going to wear a bathing suit or a tank top or something like that? And are you going to have the door open so little kids, if we, if we had them, if we had little kids running around like, ah, oh, mom, dad, where are you? When's, when's dinner? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't mean, like, like Kim said, that there's some grace there because mm-hmm. people know everyone's, almost everyone's working at home right now. So if a kid came in, mm-hmm. if our dog who's out on a walk right now came back and started barking right now, okay, hopefully you'd have a little grace for that. But you don't plan it that way. You're not going to go into the, the meeting that way, just ready to lounge around when you're having an important business meeting. So so treat it that way. Absolutely. And you and then that's just part of sort of being smart in in your in your environment when you're doing a virtual meeting and you know knowing on knowing what's going on around you and and just kind of being smart about that. And yeah. as you mentioned, it doesn't mean you have to dress up uh, for your virtual meetings. I mean, if you're giving a presentation or, or doing a sales presentation or a training, yeah, maybe you, you, do. you know, you might be dressing up, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, coat and tie no. or, or whatever, okay. but you just want to be appropriate for the situation. Like, like we'd like to talk about is know your audience. Who is your audience? If, if you know your audience is all business people who are going to be, you know, seven or 10 business people in a, in a proverbial board meeting, okay, maybe you need to wear a suit, even though you're in your study at home. Mm-hmm. But if all you're doing is talking to other parents about a PTA meeting, you know, do you have to dress up that much? If all you're doing is talking to other neighbors and you have a, a Zoom meeting to talk about things in your neighborhood, you have to dress up that much? Oh, mm-hmm. just know your audience and dress appropriately for that. Absolutely. You also want to be thinking of just kind of the most important things that we really feel like can make a huge difference. Easy things to fix and easy things to have sort of be mistaken about. That, that big, easy, easy mistakes to make and easy to fix as well. So you want to think about one of the most important <clears throat> things we tell people and we kind of beat a dead horse a little bit yeah. because we say it all the time, because, but yet we still because, see it. Because so yeah. many people do it. Right. Tell them what it is. It is. Look at the lens. It sounds so simple, <laughs> doesn't it? But the lens, I'm going to point to it right there. 
it's right up there on this computer that we're on right now. But so many people, they see themselves and they're like, hey, glad to be here on this Facebook Live. Yeah, I'm doing great. How are y'all? Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm doing this, I'm not connecting with you because it all goes through mm -hmm. the eyes. If you, you connect with people through the eyes, hey, and we connect. <laughs> that's, that's the way you connect with people. And if I'm looking down here, you're still going to see me. You're going to see that you can see my eyes and you go, oh, wow, I'm, Mike's got green eyes. Who knew that? How about that? But we're not connecting, not until I look up. And it's the same thing with you. When you're talking, if, it, if it's mm -hmm. a two-way meeting, then, okay, I'm going to look down so I can see your eyes. And then you need to look up and you need to look at the lens so we can connect. But so many people either want to look down or they're going to take their notes. Let's see where some notes I can take. And take their notes and they're going to say, okay, I'm going to put this right here. <clears throat> hey, everybody, the first thing we're going to talk about today is look at the lens. You know, if I'm doing that, we didn't connect. So you, you've got to force yourself to look at the lens. Didn't mean stare at the lens. <laughs> That's right. That could get a little bit creepy. I mean, just like in person, if I stare too long, it can get a little creepy. Staring contest. Yeah. Somebody's gonna look away. <laughs> now, with a the camera, they don't stare back, so it doesn't. It doesn't. You don't get that sort of weird, creepy feeling. However, it doesn't mean that you can't look at your notes, or especially if you're doing a virtual meeting, you're going to have to be watching the controls. And if you're running the meeting, you're mm -hmm. going to be having to, you know, look for okay, where's the, where do I share my screen, and where do I need to click to go to to the pole or whatever it is that you're doing. So it's it's totally fine. You just want to make sure that you're not shifty eyed. Yeah, you know, no where shifty you're, eye. yeah, where you're just sort of glancing over. You want to make it, sure that you move with meaning. It goes back to being yourself. And if Kim and I are having a conversation, chances are we're looking at each other in the eye, but I may look down and say, oh yeah, and I want to tell, show you this one picture on the phone that we took. I guess you, mm -hmm. a great shot of our dog. Uh oh, let me show you this other thing that we got in the mail today. Yeah, I may look right. down and grab something. I'm going to come back and we're going to look in the eye. It's the same thing on camera. Mm -hmm. You're going to mm -hmm. be looking at the camera. You can look down. You, you need to hit the, the, the keypad. Mm -hmm. You need to touch the mouse. You need to look for a stat. You're having a meeting. You need to know the exact number that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Okay, yeah, we're selling this business for $9,876,432. You know the exact number so you don't mess it up. And you don't want to say, let's see, that year was 1976. Oh, 1956. Sorry. <laughs> I, I misread, misread that. So it, it's okay to look down. Don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to have a steering contest, but always come back to move that chin and always mm -hmm. come back to the lens. Mm -hmm. And just know that it, it does feel awkward because we are, especially in a virtual meeting, we want to look down at the people who we're communicating with and who we, we feel like we're talking to. But if you want them to feel like you're actually really talking to them, you just have to look at that lens. And if you need to put a little sticky note or a smiley face or something like that to remind you to go back there, then you know, do whatever it, do whatever you need to do to make it easy for you to remember. I want to tell them the second biggest problem that we see all the time. I was on a Zoom meeting just two, three days ago, and I saw this, oh, it's just like, are you kidding? I can't believe this. Tell them what it is. It's the up the nose shot. Oh. So it's total. it's very, very common because most people are using their laptop, and so when you just- You have a laptop, right. and you realize you're like this, and it's gonna shoot into your chest, so you go, there you go, let me bend that backwards. Can you see it? There you go. Let me bend it back so you can see it, and you're shooting up the nose. Don't shoot up the nose. Whatever you do, please don't shoot up the nose. It's simple. You can just raise it up with some books or or put it on a shelf. There's lots of different ways you can you can sort of solve that problem. Yeah. But it just it, it's all it's all about the subtle things that we do and don't do that can really impact how somebody else receives our message mm -hmm. or receives the information we're trying to share. And if we put a lot of distractions in there so that they're you know you, know, you don't want them like thinking ooh he needs to turn his <laughs> nose here but or whatever but you know you don't want the, them to be distracted because then they're not listening. Yeah. We want to help them be able to stay focused on you and the information that you're sharing. And the up the nose shot is, is a big problem with laptops. It's also a problem sometimes if you have a phone and you're going to set it down you know, on, on the table or something, lean it back against something and it's coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. If you're on a desktop, like we're on a desktop right now, so many people, excuse me, on my posture, so many people are you know, sitting back kind of like this. <laughs> like, or just yeah, the, kind of lounge back for this, uh, this meeting real quick. Well, Look at this headroom between me and, and the top of the uh, of, of the screen. I told this to Kim earlier, and she got a big kick out of this. If someone is is asking you for your resume and a picture because they're inter interested in you for a job, are you going to send them a picture like that, where there's all this headroom and you know, you're not the, not showing you, know, all, you in your best light? Yeah, all you see is your face at the very bottom of the screen, which kids love to do that on Snapchat, but that, that's a whole other story. But would you do something like that? No, so it's the same thing here, where if you're on a, a Zoom video, a virtual conference call, virtual meeting, webinar, anything where you're being seen, 
again, you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I need to wear a tux. I need to wear a three piece suit. I've got to mm -hmm. look my best. <laughs> so suddenly you're, you're like this because you're, you're so tense and you're nervous about it. No, you, be yourself, but present yourself accordingly. You know, when you're, when you walk into a restaurant, when you walk into a school, a library, mm -hmm. uh, a grocery store, any place you can go right now, which not a lot of places, but normally wherever you can go, you're going to walk in, you know, proud of yourself and, and trying to look your best, so to speak. You're not going to, you know, slouch in and crawl in. And it's the same thing here. You want to look your best. So, so you want people to see you at your best on this virtual conference call, virtual meeting. So, so look that way. And that'll also help. Once you know the things that you can control, I think it helps you sit up a little straighter and, mm -hmm. and have a little more energy too, so that you can really share that with the people that you're trying to communicate with, because it doesn't always translate the same way through the camera as it does in person. Yeah. And tell them your trick for how you start it off by feeling good about yourself. I always like to start with a smile. Exactly. Because I just think it always just, it, it, it lifts your spirits and it lifts those around you as well. So here's a little trick. If you've never done this before, you can't really do it as much in the grocery store, but maybe when you're out <laughs> walking, smile at everybody that you see. Uh -huh. I love to do that in the grocery store and we'll just walk through and smile at people and they sort of look a little funny, but they can't help but smile back. So if you can help feel like when you're, when you're coming through the camera, if you're smiling, then it can help you feel like, oh, they're already smiling back at me too. I ran this morning and I got to tell you this funny story. I'm, I'm running this morning and as I'm passing, I saw being a Sunday morning, there were a few people out on the little area where I'm running. And as I'm running toward people, I can just see in their eyes, they're thinking, normally it's like, should I say hi? Do, do I just wave or do, do I say hi? But right now it's like people are going, are you going to swerve or am I? Because we <laughs> need to right. stay 10 feet apart. That's right. Hmm. I, I swerved and hardly anybody smiled. Swerved. Nobody was smiling? No, nobody yeah. was smiling today. Yeah. It's a fun, it's a fun little thing to try. Yeah. So so thinking about all the things that you that we've talked about today, you know, from everything from you know, knowing that you're the expert and you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can feel comp that can give you confidence. Yeah. Knowing that you're not going to be showing up in a viral video that you didn't intend to, that can build your confidence. Yeah. But the, the biggest thing I think, though, again, goes back to showing your personality. And, and as we train people, we tell sometimes we tell them you're, you're on screen and you feel like and see where, where I feel like you're stuck in this little box right here. You're only here. I, I can't do anything else. I'm going to be like this. Go over the top. OK, it may have you go a little too high or a little too wide, but go over the top just once. And you're going to realize, you know what? Normally I'll give it a driving comparison. I love to give. Normally, you know, you like to drive 40 miles an hour and that that's your speed. And. I want to stay right there. And now Mike and Kim say drive 70. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That is way too fast. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Well, try it once. Don't get a ticket, but try it once. And then you're going to realize, wait, I don't like that. But I think instead of 40, I might go 45, maybe even 47. I'm going to go out of my mind driving 49 miles an hour. Well, it's the same thing with your personality. Make sure your personality is showing on the camera showing through the video, showing so you're connecting again through the eyes with the people you're talking about by being yourself and showing your personality. That's the key. Absolutely. I think that's the key to success. Definitely. And I think then also just thinking about what are the things that I can control in my environment? Do I need to put up a do not disturb sign <laughs> outside my office? Do I need to just let people in my family know before I'm doing a virtual meeting so that they just know to you know, keep the TV down or try not to let the dog bark? Do not disturb. <laughs> we don't want to be viral. Right. So, you, you know, again, set yourself up for success. And I think all of those things together will just help you have more confidence. And then again, then you're just focusing on what it is that I want to share. Watch what happens. Again, I'm a shy guy. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So be confident about that. We hope that you've enjoyed this quick training. And hopefully now that you have the confidence to be able to communicate with confidence when you're doing it virtually. And we are excited to promote the next speaker who is Becky Chernick. She's going to be talking about body language. So also something that's very uh, applicable to yep. some of the things that we've talked about as well. She's going to be talking specifically with F and I people, which I didn't know what that means because I'm not in the car business, <laughs> but it means finance and insurance oh, people. Hey, so you know when you, something new all the time. So you know when you're going to finally do that yeah. checkout process of your buying a car, that's what that those are those people. Mm -hmm. And really working with them on how to make a positive and 
a, a positive and effective presentation with their body language yeah. when they are doing that. So uh, if you look in the description on our post, you can just click right on her. I put a link in there so that you can go right to her yeah. Facebook page and you can continue with the learning, this marathon learning. 24 hours the, of fun. 24 hour summit. Right. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Good luck, Becky. Have fun, everybody.